Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about the best sleeping position that can be prescribed and recommended by a physiotherapist to thoracic outlet syndrome patients to help them get quick relief from pain and discomfort. Now thoracic outlet syndrome is characterized by compression and mechanical irritation of the brachial plexus as it passes through the first rib and clavicle with the first rib being inferiorly and clavicle superiorly. Now whenever the opening and closing between the first rib and the clavicle becomes abnormal that is either there can be excessive closing around the brachial plexus or there can be dysfunctions related to the opening up of the space between the first rib and the clavicle. In such a scenario thoracic outlet syndrome results which is characterized by pain in the shoulder and the upper limb regions which often gets aggravated during the repeated upper limb activities. It is interesting to know that there is a vast difference between the amount of space that is available around the brachial plexus during the maximum closing and during the maximum opening of the interface which is formed by the first rib and clavicle. That is from the maximum closure around the brachial plexus to the maximum opening there is a difference of 100%. It is also important to note that the amount of space that is available around the brachial plexus can increase by two times during the maximum opening position where the clavicle is in a superior position during the shoulder elevation movement and the first rib is in the inferior position during the maximum exhalation. And this information can be utilized by a physiotherapist to devise sleeping positions and strategies to provide pain relief in thoracic outlet syndrome patients. So let's understand this, how a thoracic outlet syndrome patient can get significant relief from pain and discomfort by lying in a particular position. So the first thing that the patient has to follow is to lie down on the side that is least affected or that is normal. So let's say if the patient is suffering with the right side thoracic outlet syndrome so the patient needs to lie down on the left side the next thing that the patient needs to be informed is to utilize a thick pillow in order to support the head and neck in midline or sometimes it is even better to shift the head and neck towards the affected side into slight ipsilateral side bending position this also helps in easing off the tension that is present in the brachial plexus now with the patient in this position, the next thing that needs to be done is to take the affected side shoulder or the scapula into maximum elevation and maximum protraction position. This helps in opening up the space around the brachial plexus by bringing the clavicle more superiorly. Another set of pillows are to be utilized by the patient to support the affected side arm and forearm in this particular position. Also the patient is asked to keep both the knees and hip bent so as to have a stable base of support and from here the patient is asked to perform a breathing exercise which involves normal inhalation with deep exhalation movements. This helps in shifting or bringing the first rib downwards or inferiorly thereby further opening up the space around the brachial plexus. By doing so, the patient will not only be able to successfully relieve compression and tension around the brachial plexus, but the brachial plexus will also become able to sustain the physiotherapeutic exercises that will be followed the next day in the clinical setting. Assuming this position is described as static openers in neurodynamic treatment approach. And in our next video on thoracic outlet syndrome management, we will be discussing in detail how to utilize the dynamic openers and closers to further manage the symptoms in thoracic outlet syndrome patients. So see you all in our next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.